Hey everybody, this is the Ewok Landscaping Slideshow. I haven't seen these in a long time, so let's try to do some commentary while we watch this. Um, so these are photos of us um, arriving in LA and unloading the van that we had rented. Uh, we I had just finished my last shot on Transformers like five hours before we left, and then we drove all night from San Francisco to Los Angeles, and we packed the bag, and then we drove all the way to the convention center, which took like, I don't recall, maybe 10 hours or so. It was like all overnight. We were so, so tired when we arrived. And uh, here we are unloading all of our art supplies and uh, mulch. Now, when we got inside, my jaw just fell at the size of this hall. Like, just look how big that is. And then, to top it off, a big smile came over me when I saw that Lucasfilm, for the first time, had gotten us an official Diorama Builders banner, complete with the Ewok. Now, how can you beat that? Uh, the first thing that we had to do, uh, Mark, was doing the signage for all of the tables so that we'd be able to identify where the people would be working. And then, at the same time, John started... Um, testing the speeder bikes. Now our idea was to have speeder bikes on the train tracks and have that roam around during the whole time on the weekend but we had some technical issues and I'll talk to you a bit about that a little later. So here you can see uh, some of the tutorials and uh, most of them were stolen because they were too nice and people wanted them as souvenirs so that was kind of I guess a nice thing but uh, strange. So, day one of the convention, let's get started. You'd uh, arrive at the exhibit hall, and then once you go through the main doors, we would be right there with Danielle greeting the fans and handing out uh, our badges. Now, the cool thing, because I was working at ILM for the first time, um, we, des uh, we decided to do a flip system where if you discovered an ILM, LucasArts, or Lucasfilm logo on the back of the card, then you'd win prizes that those respected companies gave us for the convention. Now another cool thing for us uh, was that we had official Ewok landscaping t-shirts for the first time printed by the same companies that made the Lucasfilm t-shirts so the quality was really high and the fans just love them. Now another first that I had at this convention was that at 11.38 every morning we were doing drawings for ILM crew gear. Now, crew gear is when you finish a project at ILM, they have pins and t-shirts and hats that are not available to the public and only available to the people who worked on that specific project. So I was able to gather some around and we were giving them away as prizes to the fans. So that was a huge fun thing to do. Now, let's get on to diorama building. So the first thing you had to do was choose if you wanted to make a tree trunk, a Ewok hut, a base or a Ewok glider or any combination of those. So the first thing the people did was grab a piece of uh, cardboard and then they would roll it up and attach it with masking tape. Now once you had the length of your board you would go to the brown paper and then cut it appropriate size and then you would wrinkle it as tight as you could so that when you would unwrap it then it would give a tree bark effect. Now you would take that tree bark and then you would wrap it around the paper tube that you just made and you would actually now use some um, white glue to hide the seams so that you wouldn't see the exact place where the, the paper sort of like connected and the white glue dries transparent. Yay, I love Ewoks, he says. I'm sure he was more like I ha I'm having fun <laughs> than Ewoks, but I'm sure he likes Ewoks anyhow. So then, once that was done, you were able to start painting the barks. So you would just use a dry brush technique, and with some darker paint, you would like brush up and down on the trees, and it would create this two-tone effect, which would really be impressive for something that is just basically a cardboard tube and some brown paper. Now. When you were done with that, people wanted to build their Ewok platforms or Ewok huts. So we had these, the hut glue stations, which was the station number four, with all of these little bamboo things, and we made these round template objects 
that you would wrap around these metal coat hanger type things that had a twine wrapped around that. It was bought at Michael's, I think. And you would put it on the template and then you would hot glue all the little individual bamboo sticks around it so that it would create that sort of like platform that would go around the tree. Now it was a very, very simple uh, design that we did so that kids of all ages could do it and that you'd be able to reproduce it at home with no um, difficulty either. So here we are continuing to glue the little bamboo twigs. That's the longest part and most boring to do, I'll tell you, is to cut all those individual little pieces. But the effect is really quite good. And then people would then start attaching it to their trees. And this is when the sort of like Ewok forest kind of would come to life because that's what would make it a difference between a normal tree and an Ewok tree. Then you could like do uh, like this one. They did elaborate sort of like bridges that would connect the two trees together. And then people would even build ladders, which was like, you know, it's everyone has, you don't really tell them what to do. You just give them the techniques. And that's what I love about these workshops is that everyone's imagination creates something different and it just completely mind blowing. So here we are around noonish on the first day and it was like full house. There was no more spaces on the tables. It was a huge mess to clean up at the end of the day, but hey, that's part of doing the workshops. So here's a close up of how the people would hot glue the little platform to the tree bark. And um, they would continue this all afternoon until their tree was done. And once the tree was done, then you'd be able to move on to your Ewok huts. I tried to do the design as simple as possible for access to all ages and for you to be able to do it at home. So basically it's uh, broom bristles for the roof, paper for the base that you would curve either in a half circle or a circle, and then you would attach that to one of your little bamboo platforms. Now the finishing touch was uh, to grab uh, a plastic foliage that we had bought from uh, the Michaels art store and that really helped uh, create the top of the trees especially when they were all lined up in the finished diorama that you'll see later it really oh this was one of my favorites look how elaborate and amazing look even this one it's like oh it brings back such cool memories it's like uh, I think this was really my favorite out of the 10 years that we've been doing these conventions for Lucasfilm this was just brilliant like, look at this. It's an artwork. I love it. Now, let's move on to gliders. Some people didn't want to make trees. They just wanted to make gliders. So it was basically six, no, three twigs tied with rope with some sort of like paper that was a parchment paper kind of thing. The instructions on how to do it are online on the website so you can recreate this at home. So at the end of the day, we had tons of gliders. It was amazing. And now, the other thing that we were offering was the paint your own Ewoks. So, Pat Donlin was the creator. This is me checking out uh, the Ewok station. Um, Pat Donlin decided to mold and recreate about 200 little Ewoks, which the kids were then able to individually paint into the pattern that they wanted which was brilliant because it allowed us to use those Ewoks to populate the diorama after people were done building the trees because a forest with no Ewoks would have looked kind of silly. So I have to really thank Pat for having taken the brilliant idea to mold all of these and I certainly would not have had the time to do that. You know, And look at one of the results. It's like amazing it's like surpasses Hasbro dare I say hmm. <laughs> anyhow so at the end we have our trees it's pretty much done the Ewok gliders are done it's time to start planting our forest we got some fans to help us cover all of the tables with a uh, dry mulch now this was the perfect base so that you wouldn't see the white tabletops now we took the trees from the floor and started placing them maybe three or four feet apart from each other so that it would look sort of like foresty 
And thank God that Scott brought his son Victor with us because he was light enough to be able to walk on the tables and actually help us place the, the trees that were out of reach for the adults. Now this year was also the first year that Hasbro gave us uh, toy donations from their warehouses in order to help not only populate the diorama but to give away to the kids along with the creations that they built at the workshop. Now for the centerpiece of the uh, Endor we wanted to build the shuttle landing platform that you see in Return of the Jedi. Now Jamie was using the at at for scale and with no blueprints we came up with this design. Duke and Scott here are building the little railings out of toothpicks and I think in the space if I remember it was like I was blown away that three or four hours after they started it already looked like this so a little bit of paint and we were ready to place it in the centerpiece of the forest along with the shuttle and the at ats and it was one of the favorite pieces that the people would take pictures of I know that I wish I would have kept the dimensions so that we would have been able to put them on blueprints but we'll have to rebuild that sometime now we had special visitors also um, come to visit us here you have some of the 501 um, members doing uh, staff pictures in front of the Endor forest they thought that it would be a cute uh, photo op for them and uh, this was the biggest surprise these two kids came with their Ewok costumes that their dad made for them like if my dad had made this I would have been like in total heaven it's beautiful now around the second day we had an emergency meeting of sorts if you want to call it that because we figured out that we have no more space so we had to start taking tables from where the people were building and sticking them to the existing diorama to make it wider so that we'd have more space to be able to plant more trees which would give a bigger forest effect obviously but we had so many people build trees and stuff it was much needed now here we're putting some of the mulch which is in itself a funny story because when we designed it we knew that the mulch was the best thing to cover the tables but the um, not the staff but the the owners I guess or the security of the convention center almost didn't allow us to bring it inside because they were saying that we'd set fire to the whole convention center but we told them that it was dry and it was safe and after about an hour of negotiations they finally let us bring it in thank god because if we would have had white tables it would have just look silly so here i am placing some of the platforms that uh, the connecting bridges between the trees and we're really starting to see the forest really come together we had to do a little bit of reorientation on our speeder bike train tracks here john was doing a test run now our idea was to have this speeder bike chase happen every day but the trains kept tipping over and also because the forest kept growing we couldn't lay out the final track until all the trees were made so we did have a cool chasing effect happening on uh, the Sunday and uh, so that turned out pretty good once the train tracks were all in place now at the end of Saturday we pretty much had all of the trees in place and this is what the forest looked like the trees were at least minimum like four feet some five feet high and when you really put your head down and started taking pictures on the you know close up you really didn't feel that like you were in a convention center it almost felt like you were on Endor and it was just pretty amazing and you know it's been almost 10 years that um, well it has been 10 years actually that we've been doing this for Lucasfilm and I think this looking back today just remains one of my favorite of all of the workshops that we did um, the trees the techniques everything was so simple yet it turned out so amazing and you can't even tell that this is paper it looks like real tree bark and with the little plastic foliage and all of the little huts and stuff it's just amazing the people you know hats off to the Star Wars fans who came and built this in just you know four days time so obviously figures from Hasbro is what really brings any diorama to life so here we started placing some of the figures onto the actual trees that the people made and 
this is the part that really makes us smile after all of the many, many hours of planning and making sure. Oh, here's one of the speeder bikes stuck on the train to show you. One of the fans had brought a camera, actually, and stuck it on, and we were filming it as a POV, but the QuickTime or whatever, the technology that existed back then, we weren't able to convert it, and so we never got to see the footage, which is sad, because if that would have been, you know, doable, it would have been really cool to see the camera zoom in around the diorama that the fans had made. So here's some examples of uh, some of the trees and uh, the connecting railings. Here's that famous ladder Ewok tree that was made. And here's another one with a, one of the painted Ewoks from Pat's station. Okay, now we're getting into Jamie's creative side here, where he is the master of figure placement and making the Hasbro figures come to life. Uh, here's the figures inside of the landing platform. It's, uh, I still wish I had kept that, but we gave it away as a prize on the Sunday. The Ewok gliders. Oh, here's Jamie's signature fist fighting. The figures, you know, they really come to life. You just like pose them perfectly for photo ops. And when you take the camera and you place it really close up towards the figures, you almost don't even realize that, you know, is it a figure? Is it a real person from the movie? That's the cool things about, you know, when you take uh, photography of action figures within a diorama setting. Uh, always nice to see stormtroopers. Uh, I think this uh, star speeder took a wrong turn over there. <laughs> Oh my god, now how can you crush an Ewok with your foot like that? That's just too rude. Oh, here's a classic icon scene from the movie. Oh, I wonder what they're pointing to. Oh, look at this, you Chewbacca. Oh. oh, now this was awesome. Someone sculpted little baby Ewoks even before Hasbro made them. Like, hats off to that sculptor. Oh, face plant. Now that's gotta hurt, eh? Some Ewok catapults. Oh, this just looks like a scene right out of the movie. It's amazing. Oh, a red Ewok. Maybe Darth Maul's cousin or something. Some more troopers. Oh, some Imperials waving. Some Imperials waving back. Oh, the bunker. One of the cool play sets. I wish Hasbro would redo that in a little, little larger. Larger scale. Oh, and the celebration at the end of the movie. We're coming to a close now. Oh, Pat Donlin brought us this uh, custom Vader funeral pyre thing, which was really good. Now, continuing the tradition that I had done at Indianapolis, I wanted to allow some of my friends and fellow diorama makers to showcase their work at the convention, since I wasn't able to bring any of my own since I was already working in San Francisco. And so here's the people mover uh, that Mark did. And... Uh, his Star Tours diorama. Now, Jamie, who's uh, known as Seeloff on the internet, who's been with me since uh, Indianapolis at C2, actually. Uh, this is his cantina. And, uh, you know, look at it. I love it. It's just so cool to take photos of the figures inside the environments. And here's Ben Kenobi's house, where he gives Luke his lightsaber. Now, with my terrible, terrible memory, which is part of the uh, you know what happens when you grow older. Um, I don't remember who the group of people who actually built this, but I think that each person built a little section and then they brought it all together and we allowed them to, to put their display next to our workshop so that they'd have the most exposure of people coming to take pictures of their work while standing next to our work, diorama. Now, sadly, all good things must come to an end and on the last day, we have a teardown because every person who built an item gets to bring it back home with them as a souvenir. That's been the staple of all the conventions. We've done that. That's uh, They get to bring the souvenirs and the Hasbro figures. Now here's part of our team. Some of us still together after 10 years. John, obviously, I couldn't have done it without him. He was uh, my partner at LucasArts, a good friend that I made over there. And here's our group photo from Sunday. Obviously, only a partial of the 600-plus fans that helped 
make this workshop the success that it has. Again, it's my favorite, I think, of all of the workshops that we've done, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this little slideshow. If you like action figures and diorama displays, visit Frank Furio's DioramaWorkshop.com, your source for the best action figure display tutorials, including hundreds of display photos from your favorite films, step-by-step -step instructions for home building, including free blueprints, decal downloads, and Frank's live construction camp. For video tutorials, visit YouTube DWC, the official DioramaWorkshop.com video companion. And make sure to find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Diorama Workshop. See exclusive workshop pictures live as I build my dioramas before they appear anywhere else online.